What's up you guys? Today I'm going to build the engine run stand for the Ford 428 and it's going to be a pretty simple run stand. I just want to make sure that this thing is strong enough to support the engine and that it doesn't you know shake all over the place while the engine is running. I also want to make sure that I have enough room to mount a radiator and some gauges so that we know exactly what's going on with this engine. So let's get this build started. Let's do it. So I picked up some 2 inch square tubing with a 0.12 wall thickness. I also have a piece of 3 inch square tubing with a quarter inch thickness and this piece right here is going to be the middle piece which is going to hold all the weight of the engine so I got it a little thicker than the rest but I don't have any blueprints or any plans for this uh, <laughs> I've just watched a lot of YouTube videos and seen a lot of pictures of other people's run stands but basically what I'm going to do is just go off by this stand right here. Um, I really like the height of this stand so I'm going to get some posts and match the height and I'm also just going to turn this into a square and that's going to be basically the run stand. So let me get some of this metal and I'll just lay it on the floor here and see how it looks. And here we go. This is the mock-up, how it's going to look like. And the overall length is going to be 48 inches. And the width is going to be 36 inches. And you can see right here, I have the thicker square tubing on top of the frame. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to get some quarter inch thick plates. I'm going to weld it on both sides all the way down. So that way I can put some bolts and clamp the frame like that and that's going to allow me to adjust the bar all the way to the front all the way to the back as much as I want so that's gonna have a lot of adjustability I'm going to do the same on the engine mount posts so that they can move side to side so this stand will pretty much fit any engine that you want I think that's going to work out really cool really awesome but the machine that I'm going to use is the Miller Matic 211 and I'm, <laughs> I'm far from being a welder, I don't claim to be one, but this machine really simplifies all these settings here and pretty much all what you do is you grab this um, gauge tool, you get the gauge of your, uh, the thickness of your material and you put it on here and it'll pretty much put the settings by itself. So I think this is a pretty cool machine for your average welder, you know, someone who welds around the house, welds some fences, stuff like that. I think this is a pretty awesome machine to use and it's pretty small as well. But what I'm going to do now is measure up this uh, square tubing. We're going to cut it, going to do some tack welds and get this uh, box frame welded up. Let's do it. check this thing out you guys this is a fully tack welded and as you saw I was trying to keep this as square as possible and I was trying to level the whole thing out with some shims I'm doing this on the concrete floor so it's not gonna be perfect but I think I got it pretty dang close and 
the overall length of it is 52 inches so I decided just to lap them together like that and the overall length will now be 52 inches by 36 so I'm sort of doing this on the fly you know I don't have any schematics like I said we're just doing this um, as I go and this is what it's sort of going to look like with the two posts that are adjustable side to side like that so this will pretty much fit any engine and also picked up some half inch steel plate check this thing out this thing is thick and I got this from Phillips Steel Co. here in Long Beach. Pretty cool store. Um, they have a lot, a lot of scrap metal. So I got that for a pretty good price. Um, but I'm, I am going to change the square tubing. Um, I don't know. I just want to make sure that this thing is strong enough to hold the engine. So I'll be switching to the same one as I'm using as the bar. So we're going to do that. Uh, I'm going to cap this off with the half inch thick plates and then I'm just going to do some tabs on each side with a hole so that a bolt can go in and that will attach to the actual engine mounts themselves. So this thing will be completely adjustable to any engine you'll just have to make the mounts for them and you are ready to go. So I think it's going to work out really cool. Um, I don't have any plans on the casters just yet we're still doing this on the fly I guess so <laughs> let's continue let's weld this up and I'm going to get some quarter inch thick plates and make the sides on each of the tube right here so that I can clamp them together with some bolts. But let's continue, let's finish this engine run stand.
all right check out the progress on the run stand it's looking really good uh, just a couple of things to talk about the first thing is uh, I am NOT a welder like I said so my welds aren't going to be perfect I think towards the end I did start to get a little better a little bit more consistent on the welds but I think it'd be really cool to take a welding class and sort of film the first day and the last day to really see the progress that I've made I think that'd be awesome so I'll have to look into that but anyways um, I did have to shorten down the post here when I put the casters on the posts were just way too high up in the air the engine was gonna be way up here and it just looked crazy you know the engine was just so high up in the air and you definitely do not want that so I had to cut it about 10 inches on both posts to make sure that they were not that high and it is now 29 inches from the bottom of the floor to the top right here I uh, try to match it as the same height as this other engine stand which I think is perfect to work on um, another thing are the casters and this is something that I overlooked but with the casters you definitely want them to be locking because when your engine is on this thing's gonna be just shaking all over the place and you really want this to be stationary uh, Harbor Freight does not make this caster into a locking caster so I converted them I bought these kits from Granger which uh, includes a bolt with the locking mechanism and all I did is I took out the shaft where the bearings go on and I enlarged the hole so that the bolt can fit through and then I just put a hole on the side of the caster so that it can anchor down and now we have locking casters which are really nice um, I did look at uh, similar sets online they were about 130 145 uh, with tax and shipping and all that they were gonna be 160 and I spent a total of about $80 on these locking swivel casters, which I think is really nice because we're trying to save money here, you know, <laughs> with this build, this uh, run stand build, um, the budget goes out the door pretty fast. Um, the third thing is the paint. So I tried to use the Rust-Oleum paints. I thought it was gonna be a lot more durable, but it's already coming off. I mean, just by moving this post here, you can see it's taking the paint off already so I mean I think powder coating would have been best in this situation but I chose black because you can just go to any store and just paint it um, that's just how it is I guess <laughs> but uh, the next thing is to figure out the engine mounts so I plan to use the original uh, engine mounts you know with the thick rubber piece and I'm gonna see right now how we're going to mount this whole thing so let's get to it and let's figure out these engine mounts and check out the original engine mounts these are the correct ones for a 66 Ford FE and up so if you get an earlier FE engine you're only going to have uh, two bolt holes um, I think these are going to be a lot easier to use because you can always use these on the earlier cars But if you try to use the two bolt FE engines into a later car That's when it starts to get a little bit more complicated to try and make it work But these are pretty simple. They're just you know a thick old piece of rubber and the three bolts on there, so um, I think for this what I'm gonna try to do is get a quarter inch thick piece of steel I'm just gonna put it on top right here drill a hole and then get a nut and that's what's going to secure these two pieces together and then on this piece I'm going to weld the two um, half inch thick tabs on each side like this and that will make it into a mount and I'll just put the bolt in through these tabs and through the run stand tabs and that will lock it up so let me mock this up so you guys can see what I'm talking about and then we'll get these welded up. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, these two tabs will be welded on to this quarter inch thick plate. And then all I have to do is drill a hole so that the stud can go through and just hold it together with a nut. And this will be able to swivel so that it can uh, move up and down and fit the engine perfectly. And then we can also move the whole post side to side as well. 
um, the top right here will just mount to the engine like normal with the bolts and that will complete the whole engine mount right there I think that's going to work out really good um, I still don't know what I'm going to do for the back of the engine um, I think I'm just going to put a post on the back right here and do the same with the plates so that it can be moved side to side and maybe just put some holes here with some uh, plates right here so that I can get some bolts and put them on the back of the block but I will have to see and look at more pictures and see what I can do about this uh, situation right here but uh, let me get these uh, engine plates welded up I'm gonna try to finish the back and then we'll get the engine finally mounted on the run stand let's do it And here it is finally the engine is mounted to the run stand and this thing is coming out perfect this is exactly how I envisioned it uh, for the back post I decided to just buy an old engine stand and use that to hold the back of the engine and it worked out really good I really needed this style because I need there to be room for the flywheel to spin since I will not be using a bell housing um, I did buy a starter plate, which is really cool. Um, you do not need your bell housing or your block plate. All you do is mount your starter and you are ready to go. So this is going to work out just great for this run stand. Uh, but I'm going to have to turn this into a two-parter. I still have to finish the radiator mounts, uh, mount all the gauges, and do all the wiring for the startup but I'm getting super excited you guys and super nervous as well because you know I just hope that everything goes well with the first startup but man once this thing comes to life it's gonna be such an amazing feeling I cannot wait I haven't done any videos for you guys uh, I just been working on this stand for the past month and it's just taking way longer than I expected I'm not a fabricator or a welder I'm just doing this as I go but I think it's coming out really good I've always wanted my own engine run stand and now I get to finally build one exactly how I want but that's gonna be it thank you guys for watching I'll see you guys on the next one boom